morning, everyone. I'm Wina. The topic of my presentation today is occurrence, movement, and distribution of bipolar snowflakes, Persia tree cactus, in southern Texas. First of all, let me tell you about what is Persia tree cactus. Persia tree cactus is one of the bipolar snowflakes. They are also called common bipolar snowflakes or elliptic bipolar snowflakes. They have been temperate and tropical ocean throughout the world. Some bipolar population live closer to the shore, while others live further out to the sea. About the coastal dolphin, they appear to adapt to warm, shallow waters, so they have small body and large flippers for maneuverability and heat dispersal. Have been explaining what is tertiary cactus. Now let's move on to know about why we do this observation. This is because only three long-term studies of free-ranging and dentin buffalo stove have been conducted. Especially, the buffalo stove in Texas have been studied only opportunistically by Grutus. Therefore, in order to get more information about buffalo stove in Texas, we decided to do this observation. The map shows the location of Port Aransas, which is the place we did the research. About this study, we totally have three aims, including seasonal occurrence, daily movement, and individual distribution of bottom development in a study area. Over the next nine minutes, you are going to have get a better understanding of the factors to affect dolphin's distribution and the differences between individual and social groups. Now, let's move on to the next part, the one-year observation method. First, we made a both end land observation from June 1st, 1966 to May 31st, 1977 for one year. Besides, we define the season as follows. The summer is June to August, fall, September to November, winter, December to February, and spring is March to May. Next, we take versus research of models of feet to identify 21 individual stolen. The word of individuals in this study means within the population, using slab paper spots or scar tissue on the dorsal feet to identify them as one individual. And the word of social group means two or more individuals did the activity together. Last of all, we take a post ERISA into seven sections, including ERISA's has the confluence Lydia and channels, Corpus Christi Bayou, Morris and Cummins Cuts, Corpus Christi Channel, and Arisa Channel. Let's now shift the emphasis away from the method to a result. The first result is about seasonal occurrence. Let's take a look at this figure. It shows the mean number of buffalo stolen counted in the study area. We can notice that dopers abundance decline from summer to fall a significant growth in the winter and decline again in the spring. Besides all this, the identifiable dolphins also confirm a seasonal occurrence phenomenon. Let's take a look at these bar charts on this slide. It shows the sighting number of the thing, one of the one of the individual dolphin. The X axis represents the seasons, while Y axis shows the percentage of total days <laughs> that dolphins occur. We can notice that thick fins tend to occur during spring and summer. The other three individuals, including Jagger, Notch Fin, and Short Triangle, are the same results. While other five individuals, including Lumpy, Crowd, Bad Fin, Twin, and Titi, tend to appear during fall and winter. About this phenomenon, the explanation is full availability. According to Gunther's research, most fish species emigrate from the bay to the Gulf for the winters, but a few species spend the winters in the bay. For example, three species, including Stramuli, <laughs> Sandtrout, and Brushroom, which spend the winters in the bay, have been found in the stomach of Bartonus dolphin. So, if food availability influences the seasonal occurrence phenomenon in the study area, the individual dolphin or social groups may have their own food preferences. Having explained seasonal occurrence, I would like to move to daily movements. Tide and 
the direction of movements were significant state related. Let's take a look at this bar chart on the left. It shows the direction of dolphins at all times in a recent past. The x axis represents the F and front, while the y axis shows the number of frequency of individual dolphin cycles. In order to explain the meaning of up and down, let's take a look at this animation on the right. The pink spot represents the dolphins, while the blue region is the ocean. The word up means dolphin move up to the sea surface, while down means move down to the deep ocean. According to the data from the bar chart on the left, we can notice that dolphins, most dolphins tend to move up during ebb tide. When during flood tide, most of them move down. The other step results are Corpus Christi channel and Lydia and channel. This tidal data indicate that dolphin respond to the dominant tidal currents by moving against them. The explanation is the method of feeding. Now, I am going to show you a video clip. The fish here are very difficult to catch, and in such shallow water, they want to be safe. Yet the dolphins have a plan. They have learned to corral the fish by working as a team. From the video, we can notice that dolphins use special technique to catch fish. This is because Dolphins may catch fish more easily when the fish are swimming with or being carried by the currents. Besides all this, there is evidence that more fish move through a race tide during ebb tide than during flood tide. And the differences between catched between ebb tide corrections and flood tide corrections was tremendous. Therefore, dolphins may develop a special technique to catch fish for taking advantage of concentration of food which apparently occur in a recent past during ebb tide. As I have discussed seasonal occurrence and daily movements, I would like to continue with individual distribution patterns. Let's take a look at this figure. It shows the distribution of bottomless dolphin in a study area. Then we separate this area into region A and region B. Region A include a recent past the confluence, Lydia in channel, and Corpus Christi channel, while region B has more recent humid cut, which means that we separate the region into the lower sections and the upper section. In order to compare these two regions, let's take a look at this table. This table shows the percentage of occurrence in region A, region B, and region A and B. On the left column are the different individual dolphins. We can see that there are five individuals, including Thick B, Short Triangle, Snaggletooth, Bent B, and Tiger, tend to occur in Region A. While all the three individuals, including French DM, Tiki, and Chopper, tend to occur in Region B. This indicates that dolphins have, each dolphin has one home range. Home range means the area to which an animal usually confirms its daily activities. Some individuals use different portions of their home ranges on a seasonal basis. Besides the home range, the boundary between region A and region B might cause by the physical feature, such as deep channels or large shadow bays, or it might cause by the social barrier that separates the social groups. I hope I made my points clear. Now it's time to conclude. First, individual dolphins as, or social groups may have their own food preferences. Second, tide and dolphin movements were significantly related in some sections of the study area. Last but not least, the different distribution might cause by their own home range, physical features such as channel, channels or bays or social barriers. Thank you for your attention.